On the 22nd of next month, it will have been three years since Corporal Pat Tillman was killed in an ambush by hostile forces in Afghanistan. Well, that was the first version. Our third story in the countdown, Pat Tillman's mother has had enough of the versions. Her remarkable interview in a moment. At the end of May 2004, after his memorial service, after the grief, after the patriotic surge at the thought of a professional football star, having given up life itself for the country he loved, the Army reported it had just discovered that Pat Tillman had, in fact, not been killed by the Taliban, but by friendly fire. The next May, the story changed again. The Army had known it was friendly fire from virtually the day he died. Yesterday came the latest story. Nine officers, including four generals, had known, including at least one who attended Tillman's nationally televised memorial service, but said nothing to the family about the truth while he was there. But nobody, not whoever shot Pat Tillman, not whoever did not tell his family nor the public the truth, nobody in the military merits criminal prosecution. Mary Tillman says she is not getting, still, the truth from the United States military, still not being told why the only testimony being permitted is from those who were part of the group that fired at and killed her son, and not from other witnesses, or at least those with less of an apparent motive to lie. Still not being told why the military had told her that her son's diary had been lost, but now says, no, it was burned just after the incident destroyed, along with his clothes, still not being told why such high-ranking officers knew the truth but did not tell her until after they had used the story of her son's death as a recruiting tool. Mary Tillman joined Dan Patrick and me this afternoon on ESPN Radio. Their attempts to cover it up are so outrageous from the outset that if they started admitting wrongs, then they would have to just keep admitting such atrocious lies that it would just get out of hand. I mean, the idea in my mind that that this was not something that that possibly even Rumsfeld was aware of is kind of ludicrous because you have admittedly four generals who, you know, they're they're claiming knew that it was a fratricide, you know, didn't act appropriately or there were errors and missteps. It seems to me that Rumsfeld would have to be aware of it. They are not going to destroy the uniform of, of their most high-profile soldier who was killed by fratricide without the knowledge of the Secretary of Defense. That's my opinion. In, in death, do you believe that this administration used your son as a sales tool for, for war, if not in Afghanistan, then for the war in Iraq? Do you think that's what is at the heart oh, of this? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I believe that's what they did. Because if you think about it, w there, was a new, there was a leak. Okay, there was an obvious leak on Friday. We were, you know, not told until, you know, yesterday. It was leaked that these generals were going to be reprimanded for missteps and errors. Is, well, that, is that how it was described? Well, when it came out in the news on Friday, that's what they said. So we had a heads up that this was kind of going to be their conclusion. And, but if you think about it, um, you know, Pat was, you know, Pat was killed on April 22nd. On April 29th, General Abizaid, General Brown, and General Kensinger were notified that Pat was indeed killed by fratricide. General Kensinger was at Pat's memorial service on May 3rd. He already knew that Pat was killed by fratricide. Yet the Army gave a Navy SEAL friend of Pat's a narrative to read that indicated that Pat was killed by enemy fire. That is not a misstep. That is not an error. That was an attempt to have this glamorous narrative read on national television to basically dupe the public. I mean, it's very important to keep in mind that this was not simply to dupe our family and to assuage our family. This was an attempt to dupe the public and to promote this war and to get recruitment up. And that is immoral and it's a travesty that this young man who did not, by the way, believe in the war in Iraq uh, was the right thing to do. I mean, that was just a horrible thing to do to his legacy. What do you want though, Mary? I would like to, everything, I wanted a congressional hearing because I want to find out what actually happened. We've been lied to so, so much throughout this whole ordeal that I would like to hear, I would like to have it all aired out um, in a congressional hearing and then we're, we're working to have that happen. 
do you have clearly in your mind what you think happened in Afghanistan to your son? I, I, not, not what they're saying, not what they told you the first time, not what they told you the second time, not what they told you the third time, not what they told you the umpteenth time, and not what they said yesterday. Can you go through this, because I don't want to leave any doubt in anybody's mind, what do you think happened and why to your son? I don't know. I think there's three scenarios possibly, and I'd rather not get into them. But I really don't know what happened because we have been told so many different things. I don't. I can't say that I really do know ultimately what happened to him. But you have included among those three things the possibility that someone deliberately shot him. I'm not excluding that. Okay. I don't think we can at this point. What do you think Pat would think of all this? What's going on? Well, I think he would be hurt. <laughs> I think he'd be hurt and outraged. Um, this is not why he enlisted. Um, he had high regard for, you know, the ideals of the country. Um, and he was constantly, you know, reading and investigating things. And, and he was, it was becoming very clear to him that he thought the war in Iraq was illegal. Um, he didn't like the idea going in. And then when they got over there, more and more he believed that it was you know, an unjustified war. Um, and I think he'd be kind of amused at the way uh, the right and the left have used him, and, and that, that would probably amuse him, because he wasn't that easy to put in a box. <laughs> but when you said that he looked at this as illegal, do you, I mean, are we looking at a conspiracy theory, though, Mary, just to be fair to your feelings and, and how sensitive this is, is there more to it that you don't want to get into now because you feel that there could be a conspiracy theory with Pat's thoughts on the war and using him as this shield or, you know, to prop him up to say, you can be just like Pat Tillman, come join the, the war. Well, I definitely think Pat was used. I, of course he was used. I mean, once he was killed, I think they saw this as an opportunity. I mean, you have to remember, this was right after Abu Ghraib. And this was the worst month of the war so far, the month of April 2004. And so... Um, when, you know, when he died, this was an opportunity for them. Can I say there was a conspiracy? I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if, if I can go so far as to say that. Um, but I can't eliminate it, can I? It's unclear if Mary Tillman will get the congressional inquiry she seeks. Goodness knows we as a nation have not given her anything else she wanted.